items. Our first public hearing case is Agenda 5A. This is REZ 2024-01. This is the Gresham event venue. It is located at 8415 Mobile Austin Road. It is currently EA and the request is for a PBR. This involves 10.3 acres and it will be served with well and septic. Mr. Hill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Commissioners. As stated, the request here is for EA to PDR in order for the applicant to operate, uh, utilize the property as a club lodge meeting or event facility, also to accommodate overnight guests. It has furniture on Old Valdosta Road and Salem Church Road. It's within the rural service area and agricultural forestry character area. The TRC analyzed the request, the standards governing the exercise and zoning power set forth in 10.0105 of the ULDC, and the factors most relevant this application, including the nature of the request as it pertains to a rural setting, current trends of event venues in rural areas, the surrounding agricultural and clustered residential use of lands, and is therefore supportive of the following staff recommended conditions, that this property may be used for uses permitted in the EA zoning district and a club lodge meeting or event facility with overnight accommodations where the operation of the facility is limited to meetings, retreats, celebrations, and weddings for groups no larger than the fire code allows for the proposed buildings and area, Outdoor performances by bands or ensembles that are accessory to a meeting, retreat, celebration, or wedding shall be allowed. Two, unless otherwise noted on the approved site plan, the use of the property shall be subject to all standards applicable to properties in the EA zone district. Three, the operation of the event facility shall adhere to the Lowndes County Noise Ordinance. And four, exterior lighting shall be shielded to avoid direct illumination of adjacent properties. Again, this was a half mile notification radius that was sent out to adjoining property owners in addition to those immediately adjacent. Notice posted on the property at the proposed locations for rezoning. And here's the more detailed site plan, uh, as you'll note here. The zoomed in view showing the existing lodge and the existing accessory building, plus the future buildings, should the applicant choose to build them at a later date without having to come forward again to rezone. This allows potential expansion, but there are no plans at this time for that proposed expansion. Again, here's an aerial of the property. Showing it as it stands today. <coughs> and again, up the driveway, the accessory building there in the foreground, the main lodge there in the back, and up close view of the lodge. The property looking towards the south. You'll note there the potential future barn building could potentially be located behind that last tree there. And again, the ponds facing south, facing to the north, the property as it stands. Coming back around the property towards the northeast. And again, showing the approximate location halfway between the house and the nearest residence to the northeast. You'll notice it's approximately 1,500 feet through a series of planted timber and uh, natural uh, vegetation. So again, this is the proposed site plan uh, in your packets there. On, on your packets, it's called the site layout for Oak Grove here. Uh, with that being said, the Planning Commission ultimately recommended denial of this case 5-3 after much discussion uh, by the applicant's representative and those in the sentence in opposition. Any questions for Mr. Diller? Mr. Diller, they're, they're going to rezone 10.3 acres. How many acres do they actually own out there? The applicant owns approximately 1,200 acres in this area, most of it extending. This is the farthest east portion, uh, then going all the way west towards Brooks County. Um, Jason, um, I'm just wondering um, what not say difference, we know the difference between PD and EA, but I'm looking at what he, what can be done with EA. Uh, what in addition that, that stands out to you that would be different for the PD request? The PD request, as it presented with these staff conditions, is mainly for uses that are already allowed in EA with the addition of the event lodge facility. Right now, it's just, it's just an existing home. Uh, it could be rented out on a short-term basis like any other private property. Um, and this allows for the additional things uh, that a lodge and overnight accommodation would. Uh, that's, that's the main difference. Other than that, we're recommending that everything be done with the EA standards as it is today. Well, I guess what I'm wondering is, it's already in, in, in the capacity of being a, a club lodge meeting for event facility is what you're saying? Uh, no, sir. It, it, that's why the request is for the PDR. That right now it's just that. Yes, sir. That's, that's your condition. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, that's true. would be delimited to that. Yes, sir. So it can still be used for all the EA uses with the addition of the club lodge meeting facility with overnight accommodations. It also must adhere to the noise ordinance. Those are the two biggest driving conditions for this particular use. Any other questions? Okay, we'll now move to the public hearing portion of the meetings. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will ask for those that wants to speak in opposition first, and then those that are in support or in favor, and then following that, then I will give each side an opportunity to rebut. So we'll move on. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. My name is Chairman Brad Folsom. My address is 2611 North Patterson Street, Valdosta. Uh, I'm an attorney in your town. I represent several, uh, a good many of the adjacent residents to this facility on all the different roads there, so the church, uh, Web Road, Coffee Road. Um, and we, we spoke with the Planning Commission about this. I, I think uh, Mr. Marshall's question is one that is, is interesting because even though this is couched somewhat in terms of a small 16-person capacity facility, the PDR <coughs> map is, uh, shows various proposed buildings. And also, if you have been out there or looked at this, shows a one-lane entrance and exit point to Old Web Road. Um, it also does not speak to, in fact, the conditions speak to specifically allowing outdoor vans, outdoor parties, outdoor events of any type. There's no limit on those. You can have a thousand people and they're going to be fully in compliance with what they're requesting. Um, so there are concerns, significant concerns, by, about noise, and that comes really from residents around this facility talking to residents around the other four event facilities in this county uh, and the problems they're having with the noise every Friday and Saturday night until 11, 12 o'clock. And, and I think as all of you know, the noise ordinance in Lowndes County leaves something to be desired. Um, you know, it's the standard under that noise ordinance is plainly all the way inside a home after 10 o'clock and until 7 a.m. Most noise ordinances, I think, you'd find would be measured outside the home with a specific decibel reading and that sort of thing. So it's very, it's very sketchy. <laughs> sketchy might be the right word. It's very uh, non-objective, I should say. Um, you know, the capacity and the roadway is a problem because no matter what you say or what they say they're going to do initially or upon approval, like I say, the capacity will be tons of folks out there. And the roadway, as you all know, if you've been down Web Road, this, this particular driveway turns off really at a low point and a curve. It makes a turn off the road and it makes an immediate turn inside a fence to the right and then back to the left into <coughs> this facility. One lane, one lane only, in and out. They say there's a future exit onto um, Salem Church Road, but for all intents and purposes, every visitor to this place is going here. Where you get, you know, it looks like we have a wedding of four or five hundred people, and they're all coming there specific time where you've got traffic issues really <laughs> terribly in a you know, very rural area. Um, so we don't know how much is going to be used. The applicant owns another facility, I think they've disclosed in Cook County less than 15 minutes from this facility that does the exact same thing, has all kinds of events there. I've been to events there myself with several hundred, more than 100 folks for sure. Um, so I'm not quite sure why we need another one. And that, that kind of brings me to the last point I want to make. And that, that is, there's four of these in the county, and I think I've mentioned this to the Planning Commission. I think it's time for the Commission to make somewhat of a policy decision here is that how many of these are needed. And that's not based on whether or not or the innuendo that they're all rented out of the in which I don't know there's any evidence of that. That's what I think some of you may have heard. But that, there's not, nothing before the Commission, I think, that would specifically point that out. And, and we have to realize that this is in an area that is all residential, it's all rural, it's people who have moved there and bought larger tracks to have a specific kind of living experience. Your own zoning ordinance, your own zoning standards point to the fact that this should not occur in this type area. This is the quintessential version of spot zoning to allow this kind of activity in a specific residential, agricultural, uh, rural area. And, uh, 
you know, I, I don't think the right thing to do is base any decision on what the market may be indicating. Well, what, that, that's up to the applicant to decide. But you have to protect your existing citizens who have bought there and who have built residences there and who live there based on what they know the zoning to be. You want to change the zoning ordinance? That's one thing. Notify everybody. Completely change the character area. But that's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to sell one particular property, but you want to change the entire area out there for these people who have invested many thousands of dollars in their lives and livelihood. And I would ask that you uh, deny the zoning ordinance. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the speaker? Yes, sir. Um, how many restaurants do we need in Wilms County? I don't know. I just want to make sure. It's completely up to the people who try to open them, I suppose. As long as they open in the right place. But they all open in commercial areas. They don't go out in the middle of a residential area and open something that has six or 800 people coming to it every weekend, bothering the folks who have built 20, 30 acre track homes here. <coughs> no other questions? Right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Richard Stout here. I live at 215 Mile Hill here in Valdosta. Uh, I'm on a farm that's about a mile and a half from the subject site. And I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my family members. Uh, Dr. Marshall also almost stole my speech. So, uh, Rather than sit down, I'd like to piggyback on where you're headed. Today. I want to read the definition of uh, Zone EA, State Agricultural District, five acre. It's out of the July 11, 23 Unified Land Development Code. So it's hot off the press, unless I got an old version of that. I don't think I did. And it's two sentences. Please, I'm just going to read it. The district is intended to provide for agricultural activities, including those related to crops livestock and timber protected from the effects of suburban residential development. Single family homes and specified accessory structures and uses are permissible. The application does not even come close to that. Now let me tell you what my fear is here. Not, not that somebody wants to have a dance out of the country somewhere, but let's look at it from an area of the county that's bordered by Interstate 75 on the east Cook County on the north, Brooks County on the west, and Highway 122 on the south. What you do here tonight is going to set the tone for that entire area. So if you uh, approve the application, I may go home and fill out the application. I think it's going to establish a very dead, dangerous precedent for uh, for that area. And I don't think that will be the end. Thank you very much. Any questions for the speaker? We've got about two and a half minutes. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Anyone else? Right, hearing none, we'll now move into those that are in favor of this application. Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Bill Holland, Coleman Valley, 109 uh, South Ashley Street, here in the town, representing. Uh, Mr. Gresham and his family who, who run live oak plantations. Uh, it's in South Cook County. Probably some of you are familiar with the Class A operation. And they have they have agreed to limit the, the number of people to, to to come to these events to 175. So we're not talking about a thousand people. We're not talking about 150 people. But in, in I hear I've heard these arguments, I've heard them before as to how many wedding venues would Sir, if you can keep your remarks on the microphone, this is being recorded. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I've heard these arguments before as to how many how many wedding venues we should have. Well, I mean free enterprises won't dictate how many wedding venues we're gonna need. And the next applicant may not have twelve hundred and fifty acres bordering his wedding venue. But if the needs are there, you're gonna have the applications there. So think about that. This is a class A guy with a big tract of land that we know running right. The, the entries, he's got one entry uh, coming to go on the one lane, but it's because the property's so big, there's two other possible entries for traffic. So I don't think traffic's going to be a problem. Uh, Mr. Gresham's here, I'm here, we can answer questions. But again, we've agreed to try and accommodate everybody in the limited 
275 people. Um, and we feel like it's appropriate zoning. I mean, you could have chicken houses. You could have a lot of work. And you have a more, uh, noise ordinance that will uh, protect them. That's good. So I'm here to answer any questions you have. Any questions for the speaker? We have about eight minutes left. Left. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else that would like to speak in favor? All right, hearing none, we'll now have a rebuttal. Is there anyone in the opposition that would like to rebut? Anyone in favor that would like to? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Carla <coughs> I live at 8601 Morven Road. And I think I heard correctly when I heard that the nearest residence to this property is 1,800 feet? 1,500 feet. 1,500 feet, that's right. Well, I live about 5,000 feet from a currently existing uh, party club venue, uh, and it's loud. Um, no matter how many people you allow, you still have the same amount of noise pollution from the party being held. And um, like I said, I'm 5,000 feet away. There are three more houses closer to this venue than mine. And they suffer so badly and are so livid about having to live their weekends this way that they couldn't show up tonight. They're just too angry about the noise that we have to suffer. Uh, Paige has been out and, and uh, experienced it, and um, I hate to see other neighbors out in my neck of the woods suffer as much. Thank you very much. Any questions? Commissioners? Thank you, Ms. Penny. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I'm going to our Okay, we got it. Yeah, let's finish this first. Uh, would, it, would those that's in, in support like to rebut? Okay. Hearing none, we will close the public hearing portion of the meeting and <coughs> I'll turn it back over to you for your consideration. Mr. Orenstein, you have a question? The, the noise ordinance. <laughs> the hours. Summarize that for us. <clears throat> so, it, it, the noise back basically stops at 10 p.m. Um, and then it can occur and begin again at 7 a.m. So, um, and, it, and the threshold is whether or not it can be heard inside someone's residence. Um, the reason that we currently don't have a decibel rating attached to the noise ordinance is that we have to work with Master Court on what they will, what we'll hear in the measure of standard that they are going to take a look at. When the noise ordinance was developed, um, the, the conversation there through our prosecutor and the Magistrate Court was more linked to whether or not you could hear it inside a home um, versus a decibel limit. Um, and they have some reasons for that that I don't have a list of currently. But um, in working with the, the current facilities that we have, Code Enforcement has direct um, contact with the whoever's running those events. And so they know to turn the music off at 10 a.m. Um, and we have had instances where we've had it louder, we've got complaints from neighbors when we've asked for them to turn it down. Um, it seems to be relative based on the temperature and the time of the year and whether or not the leaves are on the trees. Um, there can also be a frequency issue there. It's not always that you can audibly hear the music inside, but there can be bass um, or other frequencies that cause discomfort. Um, so certainly with, um, with some of the existing facilities, not all the existing facilities, um, we have had a fair amount of, of complaint that we have all been involved in um, related to the noise. But most of that noise is band related. Correct. I mean, it's not crowds of people that are necessarily, I mean, from what we've been able to, to determine, it's related to the band. I'm not aware of a complaint that we've gotten related to crowd noise. It, it's all been related to music, whether, and, and, it, and it can depend on whether or not it's a live band and whether or not it's a DJ, and it also depends on the type of music that they're playing. 
seems to me like it's, like it's really an issue of, of them not them not following the, the ordinance that continues to play after 10 p.m. They cut it off at 10 p.m. We've, we've not had anyone continue to play after 10 p.m. There's a process in the ordinance where they can make a request to my office for an extension. Um, we have had one extension granted on New Year's Eve two years ago, um, and the, the state noise ordinance provides for fireworks up until midnight on New Year's Eve, and so we granted that request because there were already fireworks, and we knew that that would not really be any more of an issue as far as the noise goes. Um, but everyone turns off at 10 o'clock unless they've, they've made that request. Um, sometimes even after we've asked people to turn it down, we've still continued to, to receive complaints. And Miss um, Bates and I have been out where one of us would be at the facility and one of us would be in someone's home and, and we're you know on the phone, we've turned it down, can you still hear? And again, it just depends on the temperature, what type of music they're playing and, and how many leaves are on the trees and which way the wind's blowing even can, can be a factor. But the complaints are prior to 10 p.m. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Commissioners, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, how do we approve the reserve request with the four uh, conditions? Okay. We have a motion to approve the request with the four conditions. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. Show of hands. All in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Those up in opposition to the motion, please raise your hand. Vote is three to two in favor of the motion. The motion passes. We'll now move on to